If you're looking to pick up a single product or sealed product, use the code Kenobi at checkout at coolstuffing.com to get 5% off your order. In today's video, I'm going to moan and I'm going to bitch and I'm going to rant a little bit about something that confuses the shit out of me. I want to talk about the curious tale of two Tashars. This particular card from Dungeons and Dragons Commander Legends 2 Battle for Baldur's Gate, the name is too long, and how it didn't make it to Arena. Instead, we've got a much better card with the same art but a different name, and it boggles the mind. But before we do that, this video is brought to you by the Johannes Voss Kickstarter. Johannes Voss is an incredible artist behind such incredible and iconic pieces as Angelic Destiny, Restoration Angel and Thalia Guardian of Thraben. Did you know he just launched a Kickstarter for his playmats, including extended border sphere of safety and that Dominaria United Plains where Khan is wandering the flower studded sand dunes. Oh my days. The project's also going to include playmats from its previous collection too, including this Doggo Plains and this Determined Thalia from the Secret Lair. It's early days on the Kickstarter at the moment, with the first stretch goals allowing backers to vote on additional arts to be added to the project later. I am absolutely honoured to be involved in promoting another Kickstarter for such a, an incredible artist, one that I have adored the work of for so long. His work has been some of the most favourite cards of all time, from limited staples to the constructed playable cards, his art has brought this game to life. If you want to back the Kickstarter and pick up one, two, three, four all these playmats, whatever you want to obviously pick up, use a link in the description below to do so. Let's talk about Tasha for a moment. Tasha is an infamous and powerful wizard in the DD canon. She's a demonologist. She has lent her name to a powerful card in magic now that is a staple in mill decks, which is Tasha's hideous laughter. And that's what she'll be remembered for in the coming years in magic. Exiling cards on top of opponents' libraries until they hit 20 or more total mana value. A huge, powerful three mana mill spell. But she did get a legendary, a commander legendary. Tasha the Witch Queen is a five mana legendary planeswalker. Whenever you cast a spell you don't own, create a three three black demon creature token. So this creature, this commander, should I say, sorry, creates creatures when you cast other people's spells. It is a payoff for playing other people's stuff. It is a deck or commander trying to push you towards building on the idea of stealing your opponent's things. I like that a lot. It has four loyalty when it comes in. It could be your commander and then for plus one loyalty you draw a card. For each opponent you may then exile one target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard and put a page counter on it. So she kind of pays off milling people or being played later in the game to exile people's powerful instants and sorceries. Her minus three says you may cast a spell from among cards in exile with page counters on them without paying its mana cost. So she has to play these spells for free. The problem we have with the original Tasha the Witch Queen is, well, she's not very good, but the reason she's not very good is that her uptick is the setup, her downtick is the payoff. There is no ultimate to work towards, so she's not all that threatening. I guess minus three and her on a powerful spell might be good. But she's a planeswalker that doesn't protect herself in the slightest. You have to play more set up for it. And if the, either of these abilities were like different lines of text on a creature that allowed you to get both parts quickly if set up, that would be great. But the fact you've got to wait for an entire turn rotation to really activate her, really, really, it's just not good. But if you didn't know, when it came to Battle for Baldur's Gate coming to Arena and hitting primarily Historic as a format, and I think he got played in Alchemy as well. Fuck knows, Alchemy is such a mess. But they decided to change some of those cards to be less commander focused. Tasha does say for each opponent, so she's kind of designed to be a commander card. Now the biggest problem with this, as illustrated here by the Viconia on screen, is that they decided to use the same art. Different name, so these are different cards. The Viconias are not the same cards and thus could be in theory both be on Arena at some point and playable to format together, but they use the same Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I've talked about it in videos before. I think if you're going to do a new version of a character card or whatever, because you don't want to do the original one because it's not good enough for Arena, then do a different art. I know it might cost your multi-billion dollar company another thousand pounds or whatever to, to get some art, but I'm sure you can fucking deal with it. The reason I hate it is that I believe when you see a card from across the table, you should know what it does via its art once you've played against it a few times. That's not a you should as in you should learn to do that. I think the game benefits from allowing you to do that. I think having that memory element, that mnemonic element to magic is great for accessibility and quicker games and just a better game overall. It's pretty shitty when someone plays one of these cards and you have to ask the question, does it work like it does in paper? And they respond no. And you're back to reading. And in the case of the Viconia card, it has specialized. I mean, I don't inherently hate, but I dislike the fact that it has like an entire fucking novel strapped to the backside of it. If you want to understand each of the potential options your opponent could maneuver into. I had a game against Krim recently on the channel, a Gladiator game, which is a great video. You should watch it. I'll link it, cards, description, all that shit. 
where I play the market card from Baldur's Gate. This one here. A uh, really powerful, very, very good card. And Krim says, hang on, does it work like it does in paper? Because he's played against it in Commander, but he hadn't played against it in 1v1 Singleton that we were playing then. And I think that's just a really stupid question you have to ask. If it has a different art, it's a different card. If it has the same art, it shouldn't be a different card. It's dumb. But it gets dumber when the digital unique ones are better. Viconia, for example, in paper just fucking sucks. Whilst the digitally unique one is very powerful, being a graveyard hate piece that then allows you to get card advantage out of it as well. Very strong, she's a lot of playing gladiator. Tasha is similar. I've played her in multiple decks at this point, because Tasha the Unholy Archmage is miles better than Tasha the Witch Queen. For one mana or less, she starts to fall loyalty, and she upticks, and until your next turn, whenever a creature attacks you or Tasha Unholy Archmage, put a minus one, minus one counter on that creature. Her minus two says target opponent puts a creature card of their choice from their graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, and that creature gains ward two. Not perpetually, I might add, so if it was bounced back to hand or whatever, it wouldn't keep the ward two it's not a digitally unique mechanic something just gaining something not until end of turn is not unusual in magic it's well okay, okay that's not true it's unusual but it's not unheard of. minus six target opponent reveals cards on top of their library until they reveal three creature cards put those cards onto the battlefield under your control that player puts the rest into their graveyard She's got bits of mill, she's got the whole thing of playing other people's stuff. It's got a similar identity to Tashar that we saw with the five mana paper one, but it's actually more efficient, has more modes, protects itself, reanimates bodies to protect itself, shrinks the opposing board in a way that we've never seen before in Commander, oh, on Planeswalker, sorry. Really cool card. The strangest thing about it is that it's not digitally unique in any way. It doesn't have perpetual seek or conjure. The closest we get is that ward two not being into end of turn, but again, that isn't unusual. Oh no, sorry. I keep saying that. It is unusual, but it's not unheard of. Of course, Tashar the Unholy Archimage, it doesn't have the line, this can be your commander. That's because the only format on Arena that uses commanders is Historic Brawl, and in that, all Planeswalkers can be commanders. A thing that isn't available in Commander at the moment in paper, but I would be surprised if one day they cave on that. It just bugs me that this Tashar is so infinitely better. Like, so hugely better. They are different. There are situations where the original one might be better. And someone out there probably has this Tashar being their favourite card of all time. And I'm not trying to shit on you here. I'm not trying to yuck your yum. I'm not trying to take your yum and throw it on the ground and piss on it. What I'm saying is, I really like the four mana one. I think it's a really cool design. And it's not playable in paper. That isn't a huge deal breaker. It's not an outrage. I'm not here to, like, burn Mark Rosewater at the stake or whoever made these design decisions. It's probably not Mark, to be fair to him. But the point I'm getting at is, why are these using the same fucking art? Why is there a confusion around which one does what? I was talking about this on stream the other day, and someone in chat said, holy shit, I thought my physical paper copy that's in my folder was the same as the one online on Marina. It's not. The reality is, the only reason I can think this actually happens is because it's a cost-cutting exercise. It is corner-cutting, right? Instead of having these new cards that the Arena team wants to make have new art assets that are commissioned from Magic's huge array of very talented artists, instead they're told that they must re use art from other cards that aren't making to arena at this point in time which is cheap and it is cutting corners and it causes this problem later down the line where i believe arena should push towards having the entire card catalog on it but of course later down the line we're gonna have cards with uh, two different cards with the same fucking art on them if that is the eventuality in two five or ten years they should have had different art they should both exist they should both exist in paper if you ever want to play 5 mana Tashar as a proxy of this, if you ever want to print this up and play the commander deck and you're playing against me, oh, more power to you. I invite people to do it. I think the digital one is really cool. And the really funny thing about all this is that this Tashar isn't pushed or broken. It's strong in certain archetypes, in certain strategies, especially in Gladiator where the format is... Well, just, it's fucking incredible. Everyone should play Gladiator. But my point is, it's not broken as shit. There are digital mechanical unique cards like Jar Silk, for example, that I really like. It's not a color pie break. I'll do a separate video on that. But Jar Silk, it, it, whether you argue about the color pie break, which is not, there's no arguing that it's not pushed as shit. This card is so powerful. It is really pushing the edges of what is good in historic to the point of being broken, I would say. It's very obvious that they pushed the power level on this knowing they could digitally evolve it later. Knowing there's no physical copies of this. Knowing that it doesn't really matter because it doesn't affect paper. And that's what I dislike about digital cards. I don't want them to push the envelope to the point that 
cards of this pushed all the time. That said, do love me some Jar Seal. Tashar, on the other hand, is a much more regional magic card that doesn't have a paper version. Or should I say it does have a paper version, but the paper version is fucking dog shit and not even remotely the same. It has a paper version that is mechanically completely, or should I say 90% different. Yeah, it's blue and black. Yeah, it cares about other people's stuff, but it really isn't even remotely the same. I just don't know how or why this happened. I guess at some point this was on a list of things that can be redesigned because they're commander cards that won't be as good on Arena, and thus that's how we got the new Tashar. But it's just a strange situation to be in. Will Unholy Archmage ever come to paper? I think it should, but then they'd have to print it with a different art, I would assume. And that's fine, they can do that. They print cards with different art all the time. But then the Arena one would still have the same art as the other paper one. And then what if the other paper one eventually comes to Arena 2? What if we ever get that... <sighs> It's, it's just dumb. It's not going to cause too many headaches because this is all like eventualities that will eventually happen right down the line and not really affect any competitive format. But I still think the whole thing is kind of farcical and kind of stupid. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this insight into the tale of two Tashars, which is what I want to call this video, but that's not really clickable. Don't forget, big shout out to Original Magic Art and Jonas Voss for sponsoring this video. Check out the Kickstarter by the links in the description below. And if you enjoyed this, why don't you check out this video here where I moan about something else. Or maybe I'm, I'm positive about something else and then no one fucking watched it. That's a common trait. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.